My lovely imps, those of you who are watching live, and those of you who will be watching in the future, thank you for being here. Please press the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. This show is free and viewer supported, always will be. So, you know, throw some love my way if you're having a good time and if you're ready to have a good time. Unfortunately, the type of good time we're having today is like a good time of being informative as opposed to like a ha ha good time. Well, okay, there's gonna be some parts where we're laughing really hard, but there's a lot of heavy stuff we've got to deal with today. And the first thing that we're gonna deal with today is giving a brief history of the website Kiwi Farms. Now, many of my audience is already going to be familiar with Kiwi Farms for a number of reasons, but I want to make sure that we get all of this stuff as a matter of public record. I want this all recorded on video, live and then saved forever so that no one can ever be mistaken about what type of a website and what type of bullshit Kiwi Farms gets themselves up to. Now, for those of you who don't know, Kiwi Farms has been trending on Twitter for a couple of days now on and off. And the reason for that is because uh, recently, the website was involved in a uh, in a in the releasing of private information and then ultimately the swatting of a uh, a, a rising uh, popular trans Twitch streamer by the name of Keffel, someone who I actually appreciate quite a lot and have known for a very long time. Uh, Keffels for a long time basically just did content talking about transphobia in the United States, how there's a wave of anti-trans sentiment that's totally out of step with reality, that's totally out of step with modern science, and is also totally out of step with any sense of human empathy. Um, but after uh, some, let's say, success uh, in getting some spotlight onto this, these, these like sort of horrible examples of transphobia in the United States, Keffels came under the fire of a website known as Kiwi Farms. And that's what brings us here. They've been all over the internet lately because, well, their users doxed her, her entire family, and a number of her friends, including some innocent people who ended up getting swatted. Uh, and when I say swatted, I mean, not only was an innocent man swatted, uh, un completely unrelated to Keffels, but Keffels herself was not only swatted, but also detained for 10 hours. All of this is a has been heavily reported on by large and small news sources. It is a matter of the public record. So that's what has brought us to talking about Kiwi Farms today. But of course, the history of Kiwi Farms goes much, much deeper. Um, Kiwi Farms has been around for approximately nine years now, and it has been the brainchild of its... Uh, that's that's generous, okay? That's very generous for me to say about Kiwi Farms. It's a it's a hate forum. It is a forum where uh, people who uh, where people who are obsessed with um, niche internet figures go to literally share private information about internet figures they don't like. Most of these internet figures have never done anything to hurt anyone. These are content creators who make comics. These are content creators who make videos. And the people on this website, many of them are very, very far right. And particularly, they have a unique fixation on trans people. As you can see, you can expect we've got tons of haters in the chat. That's probably going to be happening all day. Apologies if, uh, if they throw garbage up on the screen. We've got a lot of people coming from over there who are very, very angry right now. So before we go any further, what I want to do is I just want to take us through a little, a real simple walk through, and this is a, this might be the laziest portion of the day, but I think it's valuable nonetheless. And that is because we're going to go through just a real quick summary through the Wikipedia page of Kiwi Farms. And the reason why I want to use Wikipedia is because I want you to understand just how many, just how deeply the references for this go, just how deeply deeply documented all of this is as in there is no contesting the purpose of this website they've been doing the same thing for years no matter how much they lie about it this is a website that is built around hate so if you'll if you'll just bear with me real quick we're just going to go look at the most the most you know the most neutral so source possible 
Wikipedia, a site which anybody for or against the website could go edit and contest and does it's a very good job of, of, of gathering. Uh, let, I mean, we can just show you here. Look at these citations. We got quite a lot of citations here. Yeah? So let's talk about it, okay? Kiwi Farms, formerly known as Quickie, as Quickie Forums, is an inter American internet forum dedicated to the discussion of online figures and communities it deems lol cows, okay? So that's a term you're gonna hear getting tossed around a lot throughout this conversation. Not that it really matters. They call people lol cows because basically anybody that they think is funny is someone that they believe that they can, you know, milk, essentially, for content, for uh, uh, attention, for whatever. But see, when, they, when they're talking about like milking someone, what they're actually frequently talking about is going out of their way to affect that person's life so that that person has a reaction. And then usually that reaction appears on some level of social media, and then they further push that button. It's bullying. It, it's, 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 it's nothing else than that. That's all that it is. It is just plain and simple. We're going to find somebody we don't like, we're going to hurt them, and then if they react publicly, we're gonna hurt them more so that we can keep making fun of them, so that we can keep worsening whatever is whatever we've caused to them so as you can see uh the targets of the threat are often subject to doxing other forms of organized group trolling harassment stalking including real life harassment by users harassment stemming from kiwi farms has been implicated in the suicides of three people targeted by users at the site now we went in depth on this story a couple of streams ago. So if you wanna see that, you can just go into my channel and you can press the playlists and you'll be able to see there's a, there's a stream in which I explicitly talk about this. It's all documented there. You can go check it out if you wanna see the details. But yes, uh, Kiwi Farms is sort of infamous for the fact that its users will put kill counts in their bios. So if they believe that they have caused someone to kill themselves from bullying, they will put a kill in their bio that's what this site's all about there's there's no there could be no ifs ands and buts about it that is just how they operate it's been deeply documented you can even see it linked in this wikipedia like i said that's why i wanted to bring us to wikipedia first okay kiwi farms was founded by joshua moon this right here look at this face right here this is joshua moon this is the founder of kiwi farms now joshua moon himself is not some sort of detached curator. He's not some kind of like, oh, I'm just running a business type of guy. Joshua Moon is deeply involved in the targeting and harassment of his users, uh, up to even even up to even pulling their uh, their account information when they make an account on his site to push back against the bullying. He will access their information and potentially use it against them. In fact, now while you can't prove all of it, a lot of people have argued that perhaps that is how some of the docs of some of the victims of this website got out in the first place. They went to the website to try and, 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 uh, and, you know, push back against lies that were being spread about them, and then their information was leaked out. Now, that's all alleged. There's no real way we can prove that yet. Yet. Just so you know, this is the founder, Joshua Null Moon. Now, uh, just, just so you guys remember who we're talking about here, you got a face to the name. Now, like I said, again, uh, Null, aka Josh Moon, is not somebody who has, a uh, exactly been secretive about uh, about his involvement with the site he's deeply involved with this site and also he loves to put his name all over everything because as it turns out he's got a little bit of a you know he's got a little bit of a showman in him he likes to he likes to have the fame of running the site until he doesn't and we'll get to that too it was originally launched as a forum website to troll and harass a web comic artist who was first noticed in 2007 on a 4chan video game board. Eventually, an Encyclopedia Dram Dramatica page was created about the artist. A dedicated wiki titled Quickie, based on the artist's initials, was created by people who felt that Encyclopedia Dramatica entry was not detailed or accurate enough. Kiwi Farms was originally called the Quickie Forums before Kiwi Farms was coined in 2014. Following, now this is where it gets really, really interesting, okay? Real interesting. 
Following the March 2019 Christchurch mosque shootings, some of you may recall the, the, uh, the mass shooting at the mosque in Christchurch, which killed a lot of people. Kiwi Farms was blocked by New Zealand internet service providers after Moon denied a request by the New Zealand police to voluntarily hand over data on posts relating to the shooting. Following the June 2021 suicide of Nier, a software developer who had been a target of harassment from Kiwi Farms users, DreamHost gave the site owner notice that they would no longer provide domain registration services. Kiwi Farms sub subsequently began using a Russian registrar. Shortly after, thereafter, it was moved to an American-based domain registrar. Kiwi Farms now uses services from Cloudflare, an American hosting and web security service provider. Following Kiwi Farms' harassment campaign against a Canadian streamer, political activist, and transgender activist named Clara Keffel Sorrenti, who we mentioned before, a campaign was started to try and convince Cloudflare to stop supporting the site. Now, so far, Cloudflare has not uh, been super vocal in responding to this. In fact, Cloudflare has been um, hiding and muting people's responses uh, to their, on their social media. There's been a, a very large campaign of people writing messages to Cloudflare, which Cloudflare has uh, gone on to si essentially just bury. They, they, they use the Twitter features to hide those comments. Really unfortunate. But we'll see how that goes, because that is yet to be developed, and there's some interesting bits that we're going to get to, okay? Harassment. The targets of Kiwi Farms threads are often subject to organized group trolling, harassment, stalking, including real-life harassment by users. Tactics include publishing their victims' personal information, doxing, trying to get them fired from their jobs, reporting crimes at their addresses in order in an attempt to have police dispatched to their homes, which is called swatting, and harassing family members and friends. Some of Kiwi Farms' harassment campaigns have continued for months or years, and some aim to drive the targets to suicide specifically. The website originated to harass an autistic and transgender webcomic artist, but now hosts threads des dedicated to harassing many individuals, particularly minorities, women, LGBT people, neurodivergent people, and people considered by Kiwi Farms users to be mentally ill or sexually deviant, which if you, as, as if there's like any doubt about it, basically anyone who's not uh, a, a straight, white, uh, basement-dwelling, hateful asshole is considered deviant to them. Canadian streamer, political activist, and transgender activist Clara Keffel Sorrenti was swatted, arrested, and detained for over 10 hours in August of 2022 when someone stole her identity and, fa and sent fake emails to local politicians threatening mass violence. She was later cleared of any wrongdoing, and police acknowledged the incident was a, was a swatting attempt. She has been docked on, doxxed on Kiwi Farms where her physical address, email address, and other personal information was posted to a thread dedicated to discussing her. Users also posted the address of an unrelated man who lives in the same sh city and shares her last name, and police were also sent to his residence. After the swatting incident, Sorrenti said she moved out of her home and into a hotel for safety. Quick update. Currently, after Keffel's hotel was doxxed, and there was, there was uh, probably, un, it's unknown for sure if there was any unsuccessful attempts because we don't have access to this, but after, um, after Keffels' hotels were doxxed, Keffels left for Europe. Currently, Keffels is abroad in an undisclosed location in Europe. So we don't know where, where Keffels is, though Keffels is still streaming, uh, just using mobile stuff right now, from uh, uh, essentially in hiding in Europe. And yeah, for those of you who don't know the details about this, I happen to know. Um, uh, uh, oh, she got doxxed again. Oh, that's unfortunate. I didn't know that. Yes, the doxing method used for the hotel was uh, they literally, I'm not kidding you, they took, uh, uh, Keffels had posted a picture of her cat to social media and they took that picture and they cross-referenced it with photos of local hotels in her area until they found a photo that matched the bed sheets that her cat was laying on in the photos, which is an incredible amount of time and energy to spend on 
uh, on on continuing to bully somebody who already got swatted. So yeah, very creepy, very pathetic. Let's continue. According to Sorrenti, after she posed a photograph of her cat laying on the hotel bed, Kiwi Farms users identified the hotel where she was hiding from the bed sheets in the photograph and sent multiple pizza orders to the hotel under her dead name. That's pretty targeted. Obviously, the pizza itself isn't the problem. It's the threat they send by telling me to, they know where I am and are willing to act on it in the real world. Uh, for those who don't know, yeah, uh, it sounds pretty silly to have pizzas sent to you, but just so you know, if somebody sends $500 of pizza to you, not only can that actually get you in, like, fucking trouble and, like, you, you have people who are going to be demanding money from you, but also it is a threat. It is saying, we know where you are and there's nothing you can do about it because what are you going to do? Say they sent pizza to you? It's a very, it's a way of disguising the fact that somebody is saying, we know where you are. Sorrenti later fled the country after her location was identified again, reportedly by someone who hacked her Uber account. The incidents are being investigated as criminal harassment, and Sorrenti in stated she intends to pursue legal action. Sorrenti also promoted a campaign to pressure Cloudfare in into terminating its services to the websites. Suicides of harassment targets. Harassment campaigns by Kiwi Farms users are known to have contributed to the suicides of three individuals. The Kiwi Farms community considers it a goal to drive its targets to suicide and has celebrated such deaths with a counter on the website. And then they have some links to the actual photos there. We're not gonna look at those today. That's not the purpose of what we're doing today. They have used social media reporting systems to mass report posts by harassment targets in which they've expressed suicidal thoughts or intentions with the goal of reducing the possibility their targets receive help. That's extra disgusting. Not only are they trying to, they're literally trying to cut people off. In 2013, American video game developer Chloe Seagal became a Kiwi Farms target after Eurogamer reported Seagal's Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign had been flagged for suspicious activity. Seagal had raised over $30,000 on the platform for metal poisoning treatment to remove shrapnel from a car accident, but Eurogamer reported that Seagal had actually used the proceeds for sex reassignment surgery. Seagal later died via self-immolation on June 19, 2018, which several reports attributed to years of harassment from Kiwi Farms. That happened in a city very close to me. Julie Terryberry, a Canadian woman, died by suicide in 2016 following sustained harassment from Kiwi Farms users. Following Terryberry's death, Joshua Moon posted a note on the forum claiming that Kiwi Farms and its users had no responsibility for the suicide. In a Twitter thread posted on tw June 27, 2021, Nier, a pseudonymous, a, a pseudonymous Japanese-based software developer, described long-term harassment from Kiwi Farms users. Nier, who was non-binary, said that they had endured lifelong bullying, but that the abuse had recently centralized around Kiwi Farms, which had made the harassment's order of magnitudes worse. Nier stated that they and their friends had been doxxed and goaded into suicide by members of the website, and that Nier had been severely mocked for being autistic. On June 28th, Hector Martin posted a link to a Google Doc, which he said came from a mutual friend of his and Nier's, which said that Nier had died of suicide, and alleged that the harassment from Kiwi Farms amounted to murder. Martin subsequently reported on June 28th that he had spoken to police, who then confirmed that Nier had indeed died the previous day. USA Today reported on July 23rd, 2021, that they had confirmed with Nier's former employer that they had died. We already read about this one, and that's all. So as you can see, this is an incredibly, incredibly well-documented article. Nothing uh, of, of, of major contestion going on here. There's nothing here that should give you any reason to believe that any of these claims are false. And if you don't, if you really want to go through and check all of these, all of these archives of both articles and also of posts on the website, you're welcome to. But this is just a brief history because what we're gonna talk about today is Kiwi Farms playing the victim. Of Kiwi Farms going, oh, I'm, I'm just a widow goblin. I'm just a widow goblin. Don't hit me. Because that's the phase that we're in right now. You see, as it turns out, if you engage in endless cruelty for nine years on the internet, 
targeting random people, most of those people who don't have any real recourse to protect themselves, who might be socially isolated, or who might be otherwise vulnerable, there's a good chance that you piss off somebody who doesn't die. Who you're, that, there's a good chance that you're going to piss off somebody who is then going to have the opportunity to fight back. And that is exactly what we've seen here. This last year, specifically, uh, uh, mostly beginning after the suicide of Nier, um, there has been an increased amount of pressure uh, to apply scrutiny to Kiwi Farms. And as it turns out, it's having a pretty strong effect. So we're gonna look at some of the stuff that's been going on in the last few days. Now I've brought together a lot of, of links here. Uh, a lot of these are directly from Keffels because as it turns out, Keffels being the target of Kiwi Farms has been the main person who has stepped up to the plate to say enough is enough, okay? So we have a lot of different things to go through here. And we're gonna start with some curiosities because um, like I said, Joshua Moon has a bit of a showman streak to him. Uh, you know, maybe if he had some talent, uh, maybe he would be like a streamer or an entertainer. Maybe he would be like gainfully employed. Maybe he would be doing something, uh, you know, to contribute to the rest of the world. But instead, you know, he's making jokes and, and trying to, to troll on the internet off of his cruelty forum. So we're gonna start with a little piece of history that a lot of people don't know about Kiwi Farms. Joshua Moon's company, the one that hosts Kiwi Farms, is called 1776 Solutions, LLC. 1776, of course, being a reference to uh, the, the American Revolution, a popular, uh, a popular uh, little bit of, of uh, numeric sim symbolism that, uh, that like right winger, a lot of right wingers and a lot of American patriotic types have, which is really funny given that Joshua Moon has left America and hides out somewhere else where he doesn't have to pay any sort of uh, repercussions for his actions. It's odd. Before 2017, however, it was called Final Solutions LLC. The Final Solution, of course, being the term that the Nazis used to refer to the genocide of the Jews. So that is the type of thing. And, and here we have some really, really useful publicly available documents. Here we have Wyoming Secretary of State, Limited Liability Company, Articles of Organization. We have the registration, the registration of this, uh, uh, of this here, and we have, of course, the the name of the uh, of the company, Final Solutions LLC, State of Wyoming. Current name: 1776 Solutions. Old name: Final Solutions LLC. Here's when it changed: October 17th, or uh, 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 sorry, October 6th, 2017. And of course, here we have the signatures of those involved, of the lawyer involved, the date that it happened. And we currently have the internet services information uh, tying, uh, uh, of course, Joshua Moon right here, the owner of the site. Here's the hosting site. And of course, here is 1776 Solutions, formerly known as Final Solutions. So. When, when people say that Kiwi Farms is a Nazi website that is crawling with Nazis, it's not just some made up claim. It's not just because they call everybody bad Nazis. It's because the corporation was run by, by the, with a, under the name deliberately and targetedly referencing the Holocaust. This is a Nazi website through and through and their ideology shows through everything. Now, there's some other interesting things that have been going on. So a lot of people have been uh, sort of coming out and, and uh, making statements about, about Kiwi Farms. Uh, there have been people, there have been a couple of lawyers who have stepped up to make threats at Keffels, uh, which we're gonna get into that. But before we get into any of the sort of extraneous details, I wanna show you something real quick, okay? Hold on a second. Here's what we're gonna, here's what we're gonna have. We're gonna have a little moment, okay? Now that we've established exactly what Kiwi Farms is, we're gonna have just a little bit of time together here in which we get to enjoy the current state of Kiwi Farms and the current state of its users and its founder, okay? 
So let's just have a minute here where we look through this together, because I'd love to show you this, all right? Not real lawyers? I know, we'll get to that. Rakita Law, we showed them that. Don't worry, we'll get to that, okay? Here we go. Let's start here. This was a post from August 27th, so it's been a couple of days now. This is from two days ago. This was the general statement by Joshua Moon, the founder of Kiwi Farms, on Kiwi Farms. Let me read for you the general statement, okay? Because this stuff gets really interesting. Remember how I said that Kiwi Farms is doing the little, I'm a widow goblin. They're trying to beg for mercy after running years long hate campaigns on people. Well, unfortunately, there are a lot of useful idiots who will try to provide cover for this. So I think it's best that we go right to the source and you see for yourself the type of stuff that gets said here. And also, so we can see the state of mind that the current founder, or sorry, the current owner and the founder of Kiwi Farms, the man behind the website, is up to. All right, let's do this. The Kiwi Farms is an online discussion forum about people on the internet. It is without agenda. Now remember, oops. Now remember, remember what the name of the company was? 1776, previously called Final Solution. No agenda though, definitely no agenda, everybody. Hmm. <laughs> If you want to talk about a public figure and their presence online, there is likely a space to do so on my website. All I ask of my users is they keep a cool head, a good sense of humor, and stay strictly within the boundaries of US law. That's interesting. That's an interesting thing for a guy to say when he is currently avoiding US law by hiding out uh, uh, overseas and also by having all of his hosting handled by Russia. In the digital era, personal reputation has become a very valuable form of capital. Google, Wikipedia, online news outlets, and other large websites allow a public figure meticulous control over their public perception. When a community of random anonymous nobodies can set up a forum and talk about a person candidly where this control does not exist, it creates problems for influential people. Well, that's very interesting because this is not a community of random anonymous nobodies it is full of nobodies and some of them are random but some of them are not anonymous for example joshua moon is not anonymous nor are any of the victims of the website it's funny that they say a bunch of random anonymous nobodies can set up a forum to talk about a person candidly without acknowledging the fact that it's a one-way street the people who are given anonymity by joshua moon oh uh Go ahead, Rhodes. You guys go ahead and put those in chats. It's a little bit too late. Sorry about that. I've been jumping right into this. Um, thank you for that. Um, so, uh, yeah, go ahead and just put those in chat so that people who come in can see this. Uh, there's no place for me to put that up there. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it, it, it's an interesting way of wording things. The opponents of this community lie about its purpose and character. They misrepresent our speech as violence, our information as harassment, and our discussions as stalking. Notice the framing going on here, the manipulative uh, lying going on here. Google cleans up their search results, the news prints their hit pieces, and Wikipedia canonizes those stories as truth. Instantly, the general public is left with one narrative available to them. Fun fact. I opened this with the Wikipedia page specifically to address this because the Wikipedia page is indeed full of incredibly diverse sources. But guess what? That's not all I'm bringing you. See, today we're gonna go straight to the source. We're gonna look at what the actual users and actual uh, operator of Kiwi Farms say. And we're gonna see that it is exactly what those articles and exactly what that Wikipedia claims it is. Now it is possible indeed that Wikipedia and other sources get things wrong. Happens all the time. No, no source is, is flawless, but there's a certain level of, of, uh, of uh, there's a certain level of investigation that is required to put together a page with that much citations. There is a certain level of cross-referencing. There's a certain level of analysis and verification that is required. And as it turns out, it's not just a bunch of mainstream media sources that have done this. It's a lot of people, including us here today. The mob then harass innocent people 
running unrelated third-party services by sending emails in the thousands and threatening their families. Hmm, that's weird. This mob claims to be oppressed when they can summon $100,000 out of thin air and bend multi-billion dollar organizations to do what they want. Also very weird claims. I'd love to see what the exact citations of these things are. It's interesting how he has to be so vague when he's making these claims. Meanwhile, our website is down through criminal behavior. No evidence of that. Any outlet I use to discuss the ongoing attack is also targeted. They have tried to justify this behavior with the logic that we do not respond to anything except fear. What I fear more than y losing my sight, being sued, or dealing with police is living in a world where fat eunuchs can groom little boys and little girls into mutilating their bodies and taking drugs in secret while normal people are not allowed to even discuss it. Hmm. It, that's a bit of a weird thing to put in a message that you said has no agenda. Hmm. I, I wonder, do you think maybe he was lying about the agenda part? Hmm. The mob has already planned subsequent targets. Should we stay down, they will then attack gender critical communities, especially those ran by and for women. Also no citation. No place can exist online which permits criticism of their fetishistic lifestyle and nothing would excite them more than this power and domination struggle being inflicted on a female space instead. Hmm. They've made it clear that I and my family will be targeted for abuse and violence regardless of if I keep the site up or if I let it stay down. I have no reason to do anything but continue forward. Fuck these people. Now, that was on the 27th of August, and it already sounds a little whiny, pathetic, and deeply, deeply dishonest. But it's gonna get a little more interesting, okay? Because, because Joshua Moon has been going through some shit, all right? Here we go. This one is from later in the day on August 27th. Ready? This is not a notice of closure. These are my thoughts which will impact the direction of the site moving forward. I've been deeply unhappy this month, perhaps more so than I have ever been since I left the United States in 2018. I find myself trapped in a tenuous and unprofitable position, staring down the barrels of 30 years old in no better position than I was when I was turning 20 years old. I have been afraid to say this because I have a large sense of pride and I have many people rooting against me. It has been important for me for years to save face and maintain a stoic defense against the opposition. Now, after much reflection, I realize these people I find myself contending against are all in their 30s and 40s with no personal accomplishments, no wife, and no children. When death finds them sooner rather than later, they will have nef left no mark on this earth. Proving them wrong is not something I am concerned of with any longer. I feel liberated to expe express myself freely in this post. These are realizations I've come to in the year of 2020, which are now things that I must deal with. One, I want to start a family. Two, I do not consider fighting for, for free speech in and of itself noble. And three, I think the forum has lost what made it special. Now, it's pretty odd to frame yourself as a victim when you personally and your website have made it, your entire purpose harassing and targeting random people, people who are doing things in the world, people who do have an impact. Um, in fact, uh, if you look even just at the people like Chloe Seagal uh, and Nier, and even Julie Terryberry, these are all people who had social impact who had not just social circles that were that they were important to if a little bit distance from them because of the hardships of life but also had put a lot of genuinely constructive stuff into the world chloe seagal was a game developer making games making art that made people happy chloe seagal was a relatively successful game developer even though relatively successful in the game industry does not necessarily translate to having a lot of money. There are a lot of game developers who don't end up with a lot of money, and Chloe Seagal was one of them. Uh, and of course, Nier is literally world famous for their work in the emulation scene. So these 
these people who have been targeted by this website are literally the opposite of what Joshua Moon frames them as. He has to convince himself that these are people who are nothing. They are people who are lower than him because his only contribution to the world, truly, his only contribution to the world has been a hate website. Just feels a little hollow when you consider all this in context. Now, this is a, a post from August 26th, which was uh, uploaded to the, the homepage. This was posted by Keffels on the 27th, but it was originally posted on the 26th. Downtime up update as of August 26th, 2022. The forum is down because upstream ISPs have black hole routes to our network. When a computer tries to connect to our servers, the global network has no way to reach them. This is a deliberate action from our host. They are not answering my emails and I do not know why this has been done. However, prior to going down, we were being targeted by a DDoS attack and other forms of attempted network intrusion. It is likely that these efforts disrupted the entire ISP and forced them to black hole our network in order to protect other customers from disruption. In an ideal situation, they will restore access eventually on their own. I am working on securing the network from DDoS attacks in the, main in the meantime. Other service providers are working on a solution which may restore access in the next few days. Regardless of what happens, I will decentralize our setup across multiple data centers. In the near future, there will be no single point of failure. Since I acquired my own network, I have been stubborn and complacent in thinking that such a solution would be permanent. I have been aware of this single point of failure, but decided to ignore it mostly because decentralization would be expensive. I have received extremely generous offers of support in the last few days. Long-term plans are being developed to keep the site up. However, it is unlikely that anything can happen before Monday. I will keep in touch on Telegram. If that goes down, I will be on post. Now, this is a relatively, uh, you know, uh, uh, generic statement, but there's something very interesting there, which is that he explicitly brings up, brings, up, brings up again, which he's done many times over the years, the extreme expense that this website has. Now, um, it's interesting to me because uh, as, uh, as a matter of, of historical fact, websites like Kiwi Farms, which are hosted, uh, you know, s sometimes hosted in one country and backed up in another country, and there's no real consistency as to where they're hosted and where they're accessed and what jurisdictions they fall into, uh, websites like Kiwi Farms have been traditionally very difficult to, ha to take down even when it can be proven that they're doing something illegal, even when it can be proven that they're doing something ethically or morally incorrect, and even when it can be proven that they're doing harm. And the reason for this is, well, as it turns out, distributing your website across the world in all kinds of different data centers, in all kinds of different jurisdictions, makes it really hard to take something like that down. However, unlike other websites, such as 4chan and even 8chan, Kiwi Farms does not have the, the, the backing of support. Kiwi Farms has been built on the shoulders, essentially, of one guy, one arrogant, egotistical showman by the name of Joshua Moon. So Kiwi Farms is, is almost, almost with a hint of irony, is more stupidly constructed than its predecessors, than other websites that also have done all kinds of harm through similar metrics and also doesn't have the same amount of plausible deniability. Part of the reason why, why websites like 4chan have, have, bec uh, you know, have been able to serve as hotbeds of harassment in the past is because there was a layer of plausible deniability. The owner was either not, in, not deeply involved or there wasn't a single owner or the owner was distanced enough that it could be said that these are just other users and we take care of them when the time comes if they do something across the line. But Kiwi Farms doesn't have that because Joshua Moon has made sure to slap his hand, his, his handprint, his fingerprints, his name all over all of it. So a website that's entire purpose is to harass, stalk, and gather information about 
public figures. And when I say public figures, I say that with the biggest quotes imaginable because most of the people they target aren't really public figures. They're people with a small amount of notoriety in a niche that these people freak out about and, collate, uh, and, and collect all kinds of information about them with which to harm them. This type of website is now whining and complaining about the fact that some people have decided to go on the offensive back at them. I cannot imagine a more pathetic and hypocritical uh, uh, cry-bully approach to life, especially when a, when a guy like Joshua Moon has plastered his name all over every aspect of this web website. What was, uh, Colt from YouTube chat asked, what was Kiwi Farms originally, or was it always like this? Originally, Kiwi Farms was a website that was specifically devoted to attacking and targeting Christine Weston Chandler. It used to be known as Quickie Farms. Uh, it was literally a forum solely devoted to harassing one person. So it went from a website being de dedicated to harassing one person to a website being dedicated to harassing multiple people. It was always like this. Now. Yesterday, we received a small update, okay? So we're gonna read this little update here. August 28th, 2022. This is an update from Null, aka Joshua Moon. A resourceful network engineer managed to tunnel our server so we could get a completely up-to-date copy of the database and all attachments. Even in a worst case scenario, there will be no data loss. Wow, they get to keep, they're, they're so proud that they're gonna be holding on to all of, that, all of that other people's private information. If you want to send him some sats for a new laptop, his wallet code is blah. If I don't hear good news from upstream by tomorrow, I will prepare to leave them behind. The mob on Twitter is promising a final solution to the Kiwi Farms on Monday at the same time. If that's not an empty threat, this might be coming to a head tomorrow night. Sats is a cryptocurrency. So they had to pull in outside help to even access their own servers. And all of that was just in honor of <laughs> of trying to keep a hold of all of the docs that they have on that website. And yeah, interesting how he makes another joke about the final solution there. Interesting, huh? Here we go. This is interesting. Now this is from today, okay? Here you go. Kiwi Farms is back online and Joshua Moon has responded to our campaign by pinning my thread, which, cur which includes non-consensual pornography to the homepage. Kiwi Farms users are now describing murdering me in graphic detail. So let's just take a look at that. Here we go. Here is, a, here is the pinned statement right here. Official statement regarding Keffels, which is in the Keffels thread, which includes docs, which includes docs of other people who aren't Keffels, who are completely uh, uh, innocent, uh, unrelated uh, bystanders. Not that Keffels isn't innocent. Keffels also has done absolutely nothing wrong in any of this. And let's look at some of the comments. This is Keffels' dead name here. Uh, you're the sort of person I would cheerfully put aside an afternoon to beat to death. A uh, true and honest fan, by the way. Uh, that's, that's, they've got a little special tag there. It looks like this is a regular user. Interesting. I would then record your dying screams and moans and masturbate to them just before going to bed every night. Oh, but everybody, the mainstream media is lying about Kiwi Farms. They're lying. Oh, they're lying. True and honest fan means they're a financial supporter. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Super, super curious how, how that all works out. Oh, yeah, there we go. There's some more of that. That's a... Uh... Oh, here we go. Here's another one. Here's another nice comment. I will not show up at, and then there's Keffel's docs again, with my murdering Matic that I use to behead and also bury Troons who insult Kiwi Farms. Hmm. That's interesting. That's, that's really strange. Oh shit, we've gotten an update. All right, hold on a second, everybody. 
Keffels, this is an update from just after I started streaming. A Kiwi Farms user has identified my location in Ireland and threatened to show up at my address at 9 a.m. tomorrow. I already found out their name and forwarded their information to the police. We need to get this website down. It encourages criminal behavior. I don't know how they got my address. The last time it was because my devices were hacked. I'm working with a firm to protect myself from this happening again. While some Kiwi Farms users threaten to go to my address, others are threatening to murder me in graphic detail. Hmm. It's very, very interesting, isn't it? It's really interesting that the entire defense of this website so far comes on this plausible deniability. Oh, it's just a forum. There's no agenda. There's no, there's no, nothing illegal. And yet tons of users are keep having their posts stay up where they're graphically describing how they're going to kill someone. That's super interesting, isn't it? Hmm. Super, super interesting. Now that's an update, sorry, that's fresh. I didn't even have that one when I first started this stream. I've had a lot of stuff. Um... <laughs> hey, look at this. This is interesting. This is also new. This happened an hour ago. Josh has added a new message to the top of your thread claiming Kiwi Farms does not condone swatting. Here is an admin in the Telegram less than three hours ago saying they would personally get you swatted. Deleted account is their display name. Their name is deleted account. This is from, this is an admin of the Kiwi Farms Telegram. If it was my obligation, I'd personally get Keffel swatted and sentenced to prison. Weird. Weird. Damn. Almost like these guys are desperate and they know they're in trouble. They know that everyone has seen their bullshit. They know that they can't keep paying for things. And they're really desperately, desperately hoping to, to save their ass. They're hoping for any CYA that they could possibly find, CYA being cover your ass, so that they can get out of trouble. Because eventually, you can't keep running. If you keep hurting people, someone is going to have the ability to, to hit back. And they're going to be totally in the right to do that as well. Real quick, I want to look at this together. Okay? Here we go. So, the other day, while I was talking about this briefly in passing, a, a YouTuber, a rather large YouTuber by the name of Rikita Law, uh, uh, was doing a stream defending Kiwi Farms, saying that trans people are trying to take down free speech, etc., etc., etc. Interestingly, he also... Uh, just, uh, just, uh, let me see, just three days ago, uh, did a stream, a live stream, in which he, uh, uh, targeted and called out Keffels, including an almost 500,000 subscriber YouTuber named Rakita Law said on his stream that I should be lined up against a wall and shot. Incredibly unnerving that people with large platforms can say things like this about trans people without any repercussions. Oh, sorry. I have to. I have to grab the um, real quick. I have to grab the uh, uh, the the actual clip here. Here we go. A completely fabricated quote, and also a video clip that shows that the quote that Keffels posted was completely fabricated. Keffels, you're giving life changing treatments to minors. You go on the fucking wall right next to every other groomer, every other child molester, and every other fucking pedophile on the planet. You are disgusting. When they did that about me, some random, like, blue check Harvard lawyers, like, direct threats of murder can be... That is, indeed, a direct threat of violence from, interestingly a lawyer practicing law in the United States. Isn't that strange? Isn't that weird? Now, some of you might say, well, damn, that seems like a literally illegal thing for a lawyer to do. And actually, you would be correct. And in fact, we have access right here Explicit calls for murdering people like this would be a violation of uh, the attorney ethical rules, not and also a violation of the law. He is barred in Minnesota, where you can file a formal complaint. So, uh, for those of you who are interested in helping uh, 
in, in helping maintain legal legal ethics. I'm going to be posting this in the chat. You all can go peruse this at your uh, own leisure. You can decide whether you think it's fair or not to report this individual. I personally do believe that it's fair. Law lawyers are a, a uh, honored position in our society. It is a position you must be licensed for, and it is a position that requires by the uh, by the organizations that oversee the bar a certain uh, uh, adherence to ethics, which I think it has been very clearly violated here by Rakita Law in defense of a website like Kiwi Farms. So again, uh, if you're interested in, in looking into that yourself, there is the link. Uh, I highly recommend considering uh, investigating that sort of thing and deciding if you believe that it is correct to file a complaint. I personally do believe that. It's up to you to decide whether you believe that's the case or not. Um, but yeah, uh, go, go right ahead. Um, if you feel like it, go ahead and investigate it yourself. Um, Capo says, I've heard from many prominent content creators, even in the trans community, you should never report anyone to the bar ever, even if they commit has harassment and uh, pedo jacketing, AKA uh, libel. Uh, I don't know about that, uh, uh, Ducky. I have no sh I have no idea. Getting people disbarred is not unethical. As it turns out, the bar is an organization that is designed to control and command legal ethics. As it turns out, it is a regular thing for bars to do investigation. That is their job. The bar is designed to ensure that a certain level of ethical behavior is uh, is is maintained among lawyers who. Keep in mind, lawyers are people. Lawyers are the people who make who who help make decisions as to whether someone is going to go to prison, not go to prison, as to whether somebody is going to be liable for large amounts of money or not liable for large amounts of money. This is a position that is granted a certain amount of power in our society, and these organizations exist precisely for situations like this. When you have a, uh, when you have a lawyer using their position as a lawyer, using their platform to specifically make violent threats against individuals. Yes, they get power of attorney. They get to dictate things for other people. They need to have ethics. It is, uh, it is already dysfunctional in its current state without even without considering that there are people like this guy flagrantly violating the ethics codes. Now I want to read you a little statement real quick, okay? And this is a pretty hard one to listen to. So now I will give, um, real quick, I will give a, a, a very quick warning, okay? This is going to be, I am going to read a suicide note, okay? I read this on stream before, but I really wanna make sure that it's recorded here because I think it's a really important thing for people to bear witness to when we're talking about this particular subject, okay? I'm gonna read this, okay? It won't take long. Um, but just be aware that I'm going to read it real quick, okay? Here we go. Put the on-screen CW. Okay, hold on a second. This is me. My real name is Dave. I'm sorry I've never been able to smile. The honest truth is I've been bullied, ridiculed, and humiliated my entire life, from my earliest grade school memories to now. It's always hurt me deeply enough that I can't describe it in words. I could only just tolerate it with heavy depression when it was on 4chan. But Kiwi Farms has made harassment orders of magnitude worse. It's escalated from attacking me for being autistic to attacking and doxing my friends and trying to suicide bait another friend just to get a reaction from me. I lost one of my best friends to this. I feel responsible. I can't handle this anymore. I have tried everything. I have taken every medication available. I have tried multiple therapists. I have tried closing myself off from the world. It doesn't help. Every night I am filled with panic attacks and dread and worry. I have tried changing in every way possible as they wanted me to in order to get this to stop, but it never does. Every few months, it's something new, a new docs, a new thread, a new tangent. It's too much to bear any longer. I've always tried my best to be kind and helpful to everyone, 
and I didn't do anything wrong other than be weird online. Maybe a bit too passionate at times? Their horrific claims are, base are completely baseless. Still, if I've hurt or upset anyone, I'm really, really sorry for that. The internet is not a game. It's real life. I'm a real person. This stuff really hurts. I poured my entire life into this. I have no real life friends. I have no other reason for being. Only this. And now I have nothing. It's too late for me, but I pray that someone at some point will do something about that website. There's too many people suffering, and no one seems to care because we are relative nobodies online, and they know that. Evil triumphs when good men do nothing. Please don't remember me for this. Remember me for what I've done, for my work and dedication. Thank you all so much for your kindness and support over the years. I'm very sorry, but I know that I, but know that I love you all very much. Here's to hoping there's something better awaiting. Please don't hate me for this. As much as I know it will cause some of you to suffer, please understand I was suffering far more. I'm sure some will try to play this off as my fault, but it's not. They did not have to do this, and they could have stopped at any time, but they chose not to. I would, I would have kept going if Joshua Moon had shown me even the tiniest bit of compassion, but he chose not to. That's not on me. That's on him. That's on every last person who pushed me to this point and didn't let up. I never deserved any of this. Thank you all for the kind messages. Please take care of yourselves. I love you all very much. Thank you for your support over the years. It's been such an honor. I'll miss you all so much, but at least I can finally be at peace. That was the last message that Nier ever sent. Okay? And this message was sent after getting into contact with Joshua Moon, the owner and operator of Kiwi Farms, and begging, literally offering money to Joshua Moon to do anything to stop the harassment, to stop the perpetual invasion of privacy, to stop the hounding, to stop the harm. And Joshua Moon not only did nothing, but mocked Nier. Joshua Moon is one of the most reprehensible individuals that the internet has known in the modern era. And unfortunately, it is in the most pathetic way imaginable. This is not some dark villain who, 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 you know, constructed an empire. No, it's a sad, lost, pathetic, cruel individual who has chosen to try and to, to create a website to try and find people who are below him that he can push down further. That is all that Joshua Moon is. That is all that he has done, is cause pointless, pathetic harm to others. So if you're on the internet in the coming days and you see all this talk about Kiwi Farms and you, you see people going, oh, well, you know, isn't it a free speech website? Well, now you know exactly what the website actually stands for. Now you know from the mainstream media to the literal photos itself exactly why this website has as many enemies as it does. Because all they serve to do is torture people. All they serve to do is torture innocent people. Innocent people who are putting beautiful things into the world. Yes, even the ones that you don't like. Because uh, even the people who, who have, of course, later gotten themselves in there into all kinds of trouble, I, I know many people know that some of, the, some of the targets of Kiwi Farms have themselves engaged in, in negative behavior. A lot of them didn't start that way. A lot of them were forced to that position after years of being targeted. It's not about free speech. It's not about having fun. It's about targeting degenerates. Final Solutions LLC is a, is a company devoted to targeting so-called degenerates. And those degenerates just, just so happen to often be vulnerable trans people, artists, who don't have a whole lot of social support. It's disgusting. And... All of, these, uh, all of these corporations that have plausible deniability are quickly running out of plausible deniability. Cloudflare, uh, the uh, 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 Cloudflare uh, predominantly, but also the, um, the, other, the other host of this, of this website. I believe it is hosted by, if I'm not mistaken, hold on a second. Ah, here we go. This is it right here. Uh, this appears to be the current host. Uh, 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 right here. Kiwi Farms hosting provider is Yurta AS in Ukraine. 
Uh, they are uh, hosted. Uh, this is their publicly available. This is the corporation's publicly available address. There is no, this is not private information. This is public listings available, located in Laboratorna 3337 Kiev 03150, Ukraine. Uh, and of course, their phone number is there if anybody in Ukraine would like to make a complaint against them. This is one of the companies, of course, that is inevitably going to have to face the fact that they are collaborating, intentionally or unintentionally, with a web website whose entire purpose is, is, is targeted there. Yes, actually, I would like to read that. I haven't read that yet, Silent. The reason I wanted to read that statement from Nier is because I really want people to understand just how far this shit goes, just how far this shit has been pushed, just how far above and beyond uh, 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 th this website has gone just to hurt people. No other purpose but to hurt people for fun. They've faced no repercussions. And the only reason they've been able to get away with that is essentially because there weren't eyes on it, because they were doing it in the shadows. But there's eyes on it now, and the costs are mounting. And guess what? Joshua Moon has put his name all over it. Now, it is very possible that this website doesn't go down. And if it doesn't go down, it's going to be because... Uh, Joshua Moon was able to get financial support for this website. And interestingly, interestingly, some pretty major figures have been coming out uh, in support of Kiwi Farms, which I'm going to play right now real quick. Okay? This is uh, a... I'm, I'm sure you all know who this is, but this is, of course the streamer that uh, goes by the name of Destiny. Uh, this is uh, a major streamer with a, you know, still pretty large, even though he got banned from Twitch, he still has a pretty large community. And I want you to listen to what he's saying here. Ready? In an ideal situation, they'll restore access to mention on their own. I'm working on securing the network from DDoS attacks in the meantime. Other service providers are working on a solution which may restore access in the next few days. Regardless of what happens, I will decentralize our setup across multiple data centers. In the near future, there will be no single point of failure. Since I acquired my own network, I've been stubborn and complacent in thinking that such a solution would be permanent. I've been aware of the single point of failure, but decided to ignore it, mostly because decentralization would be expensive. How much do you think the um, how much do you think the monthly cost for Kiwi Farms are? I thought about actually doing a um, I thought about donating, oh. but there's like so much to consider for that. Interesting. So. Like I said, if Kiwi Farms uh, manages to carry forward into the future, it is going to be because of donors, because of people who have money, who have platforms, and who have power, who have supported the site. Those people are complicit. People who are financially supporting a website like this are complicit. They are responsible for the harms of that website. Why don't Kiwi Farmers donate to Josh Moon? I'm glad they don't, but I'm wondering why. Oh, th I'm sure some of them do. I'm sure many of them do donate, but you also have to remember that this is a niche site that has only managed to thrive because it remained in the shadows. See, they run a thin line. Being a site that talks all the time about murdering people, that talks all the time about committing crimes on people, being a site that harvests personal information and weaponizes it to hurt people just because they're gay or queer or autistic, uh, that's not a very popular thing. And if you make that, if you make yourself too loud, people will look into it. Well, that runs into a funding issue. So see, Joshua Moon being the primary supporter has put himself in an interesting position. He has to remain in the shadows but he can't remain in the shadows because he can't keep the website going if he remains in the shadows. So what the only thing that's essentially keeping this site going right now is its funders, those who are willing to bankroll the site, people like Destiny. But keep in mind that it's not just that either, it's people who are driving the site. Now, the user base of Kiwi Farms, I'm just gonna venture out on a limb and I'm just gonna say that I don't think a lot of their, their users have a whole lot of money, okay? Uh, I don't think the Kiwi Farms user base is particularly full of like well-adjusted and financially successful people. This is a website that spends, in which the users post hundreds and hundreds of posts 
fl frothing at the mouth over the existence of somebody who's trans that says something that they don't like. We're not talking about them getting mad at like a, like, like a serial killer. We're talking about them getting mad at YouTubers. They're mad at YouTubers who are trans and they come up with these, these obscene conspiracy theories about, about Keffel's secretly uh, turning kids gay and shit. It's absurd. That's what they focus on. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, let's just say, I think that the financial pressure is the way, is the, is the angle of attack here, at least for the near future. But one of the important things is that even if the site survives, that doesn't necessarily mean that the site will be able to continue being as horrible and, and, effective as it is now when i say effective i say that again with pretty large quotes because i don't think their success rate is really particularly high mostly what they do is just cause harm they just hurt people and then those people move on having wasted their time having to deal with these people it doesn't really accomplish anything it doesn't really teach anyone anything it's just hurting people for fun um but keep in mind that that requires uh that requires them like in order for them to succeed at this type of thing, they have to maintain in, in the shadows. They can't be caught hosting all of this private information. They can't have the government looking into them. However, there's another thing that's been going on here, which is that Marjorie Taylor Greene, yes, the US representative, far right, uh, anti-Semitic representative, Marjorie Taylor Greene has also been targeted by Kiwi Farms and interestingly has brought the attention uh, of the mainstream United States media to Kiwi Farms in a negative light. And, you know, credit where credit is due for her pointing out that it's kind of fucked up that this site has been allowed to proceed un uh, uh, uninterrupted uh, for so long. He was doxxed and swatted. And keep in mind, this is a represent, this is a employee of the US government. There is, without a doubt, US state attention now being placed on Kiwi farms. And that is a pretty vulnerable position for someone, uh, for a website to be in. We don't know if it'll come, if anything will come of it, though it certainly seems to have Joshua Moon concerned. Yes, I do know that Marjorie Taylor Greene made the argument that uh, that it was it was the Democrats promoting crime that leads to the creation of websites like Kiwi Farms. We're going to not I'm not going to try and tackle Marjorie Taylor Greene's off the rails conspiracy theories today. A broken clock can be right twice a day and say that Kiwi Farms is a cesspit hellhole that does nothing but hurt people because that's all that it does. That is all that it is. That is all that it has ever been. And that is all that it will ever be until it is an empty hole in the internet. I want to I wanna share one little funny thing about Joshua Moon, okay? This is a bit of a low blow, but I don't really care, okay? Here you go. Let's just read. Remember him talking about how his opponents have no spouse, no kids, and no accomplishments? Here we go, real quick. Joshua Moon from his Discord. I've never had an orgasm from sex. What? Nor from blowjobs. How? I don't feel anything. I mean, I haven't had sex in a couple of years because I've not been attracted to anyone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, totally. Sex and relationships plays a very small part of my life. Yeah, so it's voluntary celibacy on your end. I'm circumcised and don't enjoy sex, so I don't seek it out meaninglessly. Hmm. It works. I have no problem getting it up. Like, the best way I can put it is, I can't tell the difference between a condom being on or off. It's not sensitive enough, sensitive enough to really feel it. Damn, dude, that really sucks. Sounds like something I'd probably want to talk to a doctor about. Just thought you all would enjoy a little bit of, uh, of interesting details that Joshua Moon has posted about himself on the internet, seeing as how he's in the business of posting all of this shit on the internet. Now, there's two other things I wanted to look at before we, uh, before we wrap up this little segment and move on to talking about something a little different. Um, but, uh, but, but here we go. We're going to start with this one. This is a statement uh, from, the, from the, the co-op that runs this very website. 
thank you to White Nervosa and the, the others over at White Forest uh, for keeping this site up and running. My website is, of course, brought to you by none other than White Forest. And I'm proud to say that our lovely, lovely uh, website hosts and runners uh, have made a statement about this issue. So this is from the White Forest Co-op, our very own, uh, a statement regarding our utilization of Cloudflare services. Given recent events concerning Cloudflare's continued servicing of KiwiFarms.net and the subsequent Drop Kiwi Farms, hashtag Drop Kiwi Farms campaign, we have been reached out to by several of our users and clients concerning our utilization of Cloudflare services. In order to answer some of the questions we've received over the past week, we have decided to issue a statement on the matter. Since our formation in November of 2021, we have grown to operate websites for 39 clients in addition to our own website, on which a list of the creators we offer our services can be found. All of these sites utilize Cloudflare application services for DNS, SSL, and DDoS protection. Of these 40 sites, only one has ever utilized Cloudflare's pro plan at $20 a month due to ongoing DDoS attacks it was facing. By the way, thank you very much for Duke, Duke Deserex. Deeply appreciate that. Um, uh, uh, the pro plan offers no extra protection from the, from the free, free plan. We simply required more detailed analytics to properly mitigate these DDoS attempts. In that time, we paid a total of $200 for Cloudflare Pro account associated with VoshGG over 10 months. All other sites hosted on our servers and maintained by White Nervosa have utilized the free package, which offers the same level of protection as their paid plans. As a result of the Drop Kiwi Farms campaign, we have reconsidered our need for the features provided with a premium subscription. Over the past few days, Keffels has been undergoing consistent DDoS attempt, during which 2.2 million requests have been blocked by Cloudflare's free services. This was done at zero cost. Her site has remained online and fully functional throughout this attempted attack. Due to this, our co-op has decided we no longer require any Cloudflare Pro features, and as of August 2022, we have downgraded our only site subscribed to that package to a free plan, and will no longer be paying Cloudflare inc Incorporated a dime. At this time, oh, sorry, sorry. We have looked into options for alternative providers and are weighing them as a group. Imperva and, Ak Ak and Akamai are two of Cloudflare's competitors and are both worthwhile for your consideration if you are also looking to separate from Cloudflare. In the near future, we will be sure to update our users and clients about our decision after we've reached a consensus. Our final statement is to Cloudflare and to the Cloudflare CEO, Matthew Prince. By allowing them to use your services and lacking a clear terms of service for your customers and users, it is impossible not to view your actions as an endorsement of the hate bigotry and harassment origin originating from far-right hate sites. The protection of free speech should not extend to hate speech. Innocent people are being hurt. You can act. You must act. It's time for you to hashtag drop Kiwi Farms, White Forest. Pretty fucking based. Also, Duke Deserex, once again, thank you very much for the incredibly generous donation. Deeply, deeply appreciate your supporters. support. So yes. As you can see, it is not simply small. I mean, obviously, there are groups like White Forest and and myself and others who have come out to say this. But but keep in mind that um, uh, in that large mainstream media sources have now begun to pay attention to the fact that there are people bankrolling and protecting Kiwi farms, um, often simply for their own monetary benefit. I don't believe that Cloudflare uh, has any sort of political uh, agenda in backing Kiwi Farms, I simply think they're happy to have the money. However, as long as Cloudflare Flare is providing services to Kiwi Farms, they are helping a website whose entire purpose is to distribute private information about people who've done nothing wrong. They are contributing to a website that does nothing short of terrorism. Wow, that is, that is some serious eyes. Look at this, everybody. No joke, straight up. That's not the one. Cloudflare is one of the companies that quietly powers the internet. Researchers say it's a haven for misinformation. Cloudflare is one of dozens of companies that quietly keep the internet working, helping 36 million web pages per second reach internet users as intended. But it's now also facing scrutiny for its role in keeping platforms that have been called toxic and hateful up and running. Most recently, it's been under pressure from activists urging it to withdraw its services from Kiwi Farms, an online group that's been described by New York Magazine as the web's biggest community of stalkers. Holy shit, this is Time Magazine. This is Time Magazine from, from three days ago. 
Holy shit. Although Cloudflare does not host Kiwi Farms and so does not have total control, it does provide key services for the site. Axios reports. Holy shit, Axios reported on this as well. Oh my God, that's wild. The outsized role of companies like Cloudflare. Cloudflare is at its core, a content delivery network, which quickly serves users websites that they request through their web browsers. It also defends sites against attackers. That's fucking wild. Oh, um, there's actually, sorry, there's actually two things that I wanted to show you. Three things, actually. Sorry, there's a couple things that I forgot about. This is one of the ones that I wanted to show you. One moment, please. Here we go. Here's the other one. Now, this is, uh, this has not yet been verified, um, because it's on Telegram, so it's been unverified, but this is Joseph Camp, a, uh, allegedly the owner of the servers that host, uh, that one of the servers that host Kiwi Farms. I'm gonna read you this post from Joseph Camp, okay? <clears throat> I'm the owner of the servers that host a portion of Kiwi Farms. My team is working diligently with Null to mitigate and maximize the downstream benefit of all this. Learn from the vulnerabilities we are experiencing now. Just an FYI, I have no intentions of dropping Kiwi Farms, even though I myself have a small seven-page thread there. Uh, speech, uh, speech is too important to suppress. To blank, that is to Keffels' dead name. My dude, when this is over, my legal team is going to come after you for the financial injury you are costing us to mitigate you and your incited actions. I promise you there is no place on earth I will not travel to serve you subpoena and civil complaint. You are directly and specifically inciting electronic crimes against my servers. I will recover from your GoFundMe the damages, I, the damages caused. Enjoy your 15 minutes of fame. They will wane, and then my lifetime of recovering the damages through any and all lawful means possible is coming. That's the threat from one of the hosts. Uh, and then, of course, this was a official tweet from this person, Joseph A. Camp. Uh, Tranny Demon Keffels, dead name, flew to Ireland because he said he was doxxed in Canada for his cancel culture campaign against Kiwi Farms. This is me quoting... Okay, this is not me. This is me quoting this. Okay, I wonder where in Ireland he is staying. Oops, forgot the green screen. Lucas quote on the right of this image is streaming. So this is apparently one of the posts that may have been used to identify Keffels' current locations. I'm going to show you something else, which I personally am a big fan of this post. Keffels says, wow, go ahead. Discovery is going to be crazy. Joseph Camp is a convicted felon known for cyberstalking. It appears he has an active warrant for his arrest in Lee County, Florida. Bum, bum. Uh. Whoops. Whoops. Looks like, uh, looks like that legal case might not turn out so well for Joseph A. Camp. Literal Florida man, Joseph A. Camp. Okay, there's another thing I want to address real quick. The whole reason, by the way, the reason why I'm adding on so much extra stuff here at the end is because I am going to be uploading this as a standalone video, and I want this video to have everything, uh, all of the information that's relevant at the moment so that we can, um, so that we can, you know, debunk some disinformation out there because God knows there's a lot of it going around, okay? Um... And uh, real quick, let me just show you something, okay? A lot of people have been going around uh, claiming that Keffels is like uh, targeting Joshua Moon's mom and stuff like that. I'm gonna show you this image right here, okay? This is an image. This is Keffels saying, what a cute family. Surely his mother will not lose her job because of his son's hate, because of her son's heinous actions and then have to leave the internet. Keffels is making a reference to the fact that Joshua Moon's mother is a Kiwi farmer. Joshua Moon's mother, because of her behavior on Kiwi farms, lost a, a valuable job because she posted on Kiwi farms. Not because, not because she's an innocent, she's complicit. Not only does she support Joshua Moon, she posts and participates on the website. 
So a lot of people have been saying, oh no, Keffels is bad. Keffels is targeting Joshua Moon's family. But what we have here is, of course, my thread is full of photos of my entire family and Joshua encouraged his fo forum to harass them. I posted one photo and did not ask anyone to harass them. I don't care about your cry bully bullshit. And of course, we also have this right here. Candy Potter defends son from harassment victim. Florida estate agent Candy Potter, also known as Candace Lynn Potter and Candace Potter, has defended her son, Joshua Connor Moon, also known as Joshua Moon, Josh Moon, from one of his harassment victims who, uh, who doorstepped him to explain how he made them feel. Candace Potter moved to Pensacola on, on June 9th, uh, 2015 is now an agent for Keller Williams Realty. Her son, Joshua Connor Moon, runs the cyberbullying hate website Kiwi Farms through a limited liability company, namely Lowell Cow LLC. Joshua Moon received a visit at his home uh, on at 3750 Don Janiel Road in Pensacola by one of his victims, who is transgender and wants to explain how the website made them feel. Josh Moon hid behind his mother, afraid of what might happen to him. If my family turned their back on me for what I'm doing, I'll kill myself. Damn. So, as it turns out, it seems like even Joshua Moon's mom really is complicit in this, huh? Also, I believe, oh, where did it go here? Oh my God, I wanted to find this. I don't know if I'll be able to find it again. Did I put it in my bookmarks? Maybe I did. This was one I didn't even think of until just now. But um, Joshua Moon's mom, like, posted a screed of, uh, posted a screed of, um, posted a screed of transphobia on the internet as well. I don't know if I'll be able to find it, though. Never forget the time that one of Joshua Moon's stalking victims showed up at his house and he hid in his bedroom and let his mom talk to her instead. Joshua Connor Moon cowered in fear because a trans woman attended his home and tried to remonstrate politely with his mother. Unironically, Joshua Moon is the biggest pussy coward on the entire planet. He's literally the biggest, oh, I'm a widow goblin, you can imagine. Yeah, here we go. This is exactly it, by the way. This is an this is a really uh, a really cute little drawing, thanks to eighty five d two d Derek, uh, thanks to eighty five d two d Derek to outlining exactly how Ki Kiwi Farms works. So Kiwi Farms users do incitement, li libel, doxing, OSINT. Normie internet users they all go onto Kiwi Farms, and then of course Kiwi Farms filters through uh tor through Tor. Uh, then that links to dark web users, which then ultimately links to hacking forums, swatting forums, and other hate crime forums. This right here, this is the pipeline. This is the this is the fucking this is the fucking iceberg described right here. This is how it goes. There you go. Now you understand it. All right. So, real quick, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. Okay, that was a big info dump. Okay. But let's talk about let's let's get let's have some let's have some heart to heart talk, okay? We're done info dumping, okay? Let's have a heart to heart, shall we? All right. Cuz um this this website is is uh So not only not only have I been um not only have people attempted to dox me on Kiwi Farms, but basically every single trans person I know who has even the smallest uh, 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 public presence or smallest amount of success on any of these platforms has been targeted by this website. This website is essentially acting as the nexus for, uh, it, is the, it is the convenient nexus for a whole bunch of hateful people. See, there are a lot of distributed, transphobic, hateful Nazis and and other types of right-wingers out there who really really hate trans people but it's really hard to get them all together because you know they all disagree about different things they all hang out in different weirdo forums and whatever places like kiwi farms offer a convenient nexus where they can find all the information they need to hurt the people that they irrationally hate um, and so that's why websites like Kiwi Farms are so important to pay attention to and why it's a, why it, it why so many people have tried to ring the warning bell about Kiwi Farms is is 
This is this is how these hate organizations operate. They need things like that. This they need these gray areas where they can uh, have a public face that has lots of access, where they can get out information to dangerous people with plausible deniability. They can't do it otherwise. Otherwise, they put themselves at direct risk of legal action. And it's it's really bad. Uh, yeah, uh, as 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 Hippie Punk says, basically, if you gain any notoriety online, they'll make a document on you, and God forbid that you're a trans femme because then they'll be obsessed with you. Yeah, uh, I've had them uh, fucking obsessed with me. Obviously, they were fucking spamming chat. They're pretty impotent, all things considered. Um, at least uh, at least in my case, uh, thankfully. Um, but uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that they're always that way. Um, they've been able to get people's information. They've been able to go ham and really dig into people. And again, just remember, all of this is for the crime of being trans on the internet. That's what they focus on. They fixate on transness. Hell, even in his official public statements, Joshua Moon rants about trans people, about fat eunuchs, as he calls them, freaking out about trans, obsessed, genuinely just fueled by hate. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's a hate forum. I'm too terrified to check if I have a page. It's not, I, I don't really recommend like regularly checking this shit, okay? Uh, it's a lot, first of all, the shit that people say on there is really fucking disgusting, but also most of it is wasted time. Most of what you see on that website is people just literally scrawling their insane fantasies into a web forum. And once in a while, it picks up into a, 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 a storm of hate that does real harm. But the vast majority of it is the goal is to cause mental distress. It's to, the goal is to try and get under people's skins. The goal is to try to exploit the fact that humans have emotions that humans care about their social environment and by taking a by having a concentrated force of people who can spew the most insane claims about you at any hour they can gaslight the shit out of you at any moment with their little group of of, of posters that the goal is to under is to undermine your mental well-being in 90 percent of cases and once in a while they develop enough of a grudge to go after somebody like keffels to go after someone like me to go after uh, uh, the countless other people that they've gone after. It's not a nice place. There's nothing there to, to find out or learn other than harassment. That's the entire purpose of the website. How big do you think the community is? Hundreds of thousands? No. Um, the community, the core community uh, seems to be quite small. They do get a lot of visitors, but again, like I said, that's because of the nexus effect. The, 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 uh, uh, the Ki Kiwi Farms acts as a hub where other people, other groups of hateful people uh, who don't operate with a public face can go to find information and to have plausible deniability for their involvement. That's, that, that is what Kiwi Farms' role is. And remember, again, Joshua Moon's name is all over it. There is an individual who has caused all of this. Sure, there are many users, there are many financiers, but there is one person who has championed all of this. And there is one person who is ultimately responsible for all of the shit that has happened because of this website. And don't forget what I read earlier, because there's a reason I read the, uh, there's a reason I read Nier's uh, suicide letter, because I think that it was important to discuss. Yeah, I've heard about that, Spatial Seer. Spatial Seer says there's a Kiwi farmer who is going after small creators and medium-sized Twitter people and making a list. Yep, they do that. They make a list and they try to get as much info as possible. So it's sitting there and it's all, it's, it's all fueled by personal hatred, prejudice, and grudges. A lot of ordinary people will stumble across the platform while Googling smaller creators who've had pages. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. It's really fucked up. It's extremely fucked up. Um, there are people on that website who've who've been trying to to like dox me and trying to find out shit about my past. There are people who've crawled back through my history and tried to like assemble a, a history of where I've lived. To what end? No idea. No idea why they would do that. 
but people like that literally they spend their days making up lies about me they literally have gone on they've advocated for people to call the police on me because um because I, uh, I'm like, I'm just, they literally have fantasies made up. They're like, oh, you're, you're making drugs in your house and you're, 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 you have, you have slaves and shit. And I'm like, well, I do have slaves, but they're consensual slaves, which is pretty cool, actually, as it turns out. It's pretty hot, actually. The, the, at the end of the day, this is all going to come down to whether or not, uh, it, this is all going to come down to whether or not, um, people are willing to keep up the pressure on those who are enabling this website because the website alone is not strong. The website will be will be driven down, will be pushed into the dirt as it should be, keep in mind, after I've shown you all of the reasons why a website like this should absolutely not exist, why a website like this should be fought against actively, why individuals such as yourself should push back against the existence of websites like this. Just keep in mind that even if we were gonna, even if we were gonna step back from the matter of simple human empathy, your life is being made worse by the existence of websites like this. Websites like this drive good, amazing, artistic and creative people like Nier, people who are making the world a better place for you, people who do stuff for free, people who put out shows for fucking free. They're driving these people into, into hiding and they're driving them away from being able to make the things that you like. So even if we want to step out, if we want to step into a more egoistic analysis of all this, you're losing out because websites like Kiwi Farms exist. Nuts says, the real reason, uh, what's the real reason that something like Kiwi Farms exists? It's obviously devoid of logic or rational understanding of the world like this is so gone from how normal right-wingers treat trans people. Um, it really isn't, though. This is what the fantasies of many normal right-wingers are. Many, right, many, many right wingers fantasize about being able to say these things, about being able to just tell tell trans people to die. Like that is a thing that a lot of right wingers wish that they could do, but they're too afraid to do it because they know that they will be punished for it. Anonymous forums are valuable in some cases, but they also provide cover for people to do this, especially when it's an anonymous forum that is founded with the express purpose of providing cover for hate. And no, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. It's very emotional. These people are extremely emotional. They have become invested in a narrative about the world that involves trans people secretly pulling the strings of everything and controlling the mainstream media. The same mainstream media, by the way, which often hurts trans people, which often publishes misinformation about trans people. But no, in the minds of the Kiwi farmers, in the minds of Josh Moon, they've invented a world in which trans people are the ultimate power, where trans people can say something and it will be done despite the very real fact being that Keffels has Keffels has been on the run because of the of the power of the state being essentially tricked into being weaponized against her and like there is no like they just have there's nothing there's no basis in reality they have no factual basis for the worldview that they have it's a highly emotional worldview and this leads them to act purely based on hate at the end of the day, they, all it is is a pathetic desire to hurt uh, that which you have invented as an enemy. Is there any proof that Bayou is dead and not just in hiding? Yes, this has been confirmed by, this was literally confirmed by the police. Yes. It's not just a post, Donald's angry. And even if that was true, even if even if even if Nier was in uh, was only in hiding, that in and of itself is a disgusting fact. The fact that an innocent person who did nothing wrong, nothing at all, can be driven into hiding because some insane website of assholes has no uh, has no one to check its power. And ultimately, that brings me to the final part of, of what I really want to say here. Um, what I really want to say here is that people respect a Giga Chad, okay? They really, really do. And when Keffel says, I am going to take down this website, that's respectable. And it's also Giga Chad. And guess what? I stand with Keffels on that. And I hope all the imps will as well. I know most of the imps will. But we stand with Keffels on that. Because 
as you all know, we all have been targeted by that website. As you all know, almost everyone we know has been targeted by this website. Of course we're going to stand by that. Because Keffels is right. This website is putrid. It's horrible. It's hurting not just Keffels, but many, many, many others. And it does deserve to have repercussions. When there is a, when there is a website that is, when there is a group of people and headed by an individual, Joshua Moon, who are going out of their way to cause harm, it is okay to fight back against that. It is absolutely, unequivocally okay to fight back against that. And you will never be wrong for doing that. No matter how much gaslighting gets thrown your way, no matter how many times society tells uh, every single trans person to just just to bow their head and take their, take their hits, no. It is actually a good thing to stand up and fight. It is a good thing. Even when people tell you, oh, aren't you just like them? No. Because as it turns out, fighting to take down someone who has done ceaseless harm to innocent people is not the same thing as going out of your way to do fucking harm to, to ceaselessly to innocent people. Okay? Those are not the same and they never will be. And anybody pushing that is, is a fucking opponent to you. Okay? Let's just... Let's just make that 100% clear. You have no common ground with people doing apologia for Kiwi Farms at this point. None. Are there people who don't know what it is? Yes, there are. But there is no one who defends that site who does not agree with their agenda, who does not agree with the agenda of a website that was formerly registered under Final Solution LLC. And by the way, that definitely includes streamers. And people, uh, streamers who make it their uh, mission to not only publicly link to docs of people that they disagree with, but also to financially back websites whose main uh, whose main purpose is to pro uh, is to proliferate hate crimes against people. Those people are your enemy as well, and I mean that. I'm, I genuinely mean that. Too bad the Twitter libs don't tend to see it that way. That's not true. Most liberals totally agree with the idea that Kiwi Farms is hell. The fact is that there's this small faction on Twitter, um, there's a small faction on Twitter that likes to pretend that they're liberals. Increasingly, they behave more and more like groipers, which is interesting and curious, but those people are not liberals. They're not even, they're not even, they're not even close to the average liberal. Your average liberal would be disgusted by this type of shit. Oh yeah, by the way, just so you know, basically every public figure who's been associated with this, including Joshua Moon himself on, on the channels that he's streamed on, they will spam Keffels' docs in the, uh, in the chats. Yeah, isn't that disgusting, Ada Stardust? Isn't it disgusting, the type of shit that goes by? And look at that. Even centristy Christian Republican can understand how disgusting this is. This is not a, this is a hardly partisan issue. It is only the far right, it is only explicitly dyed in the world transphobes that back Kiwi Farms at this point. So here we have now Kiwi Farms begging, acting, playing the victim as if they've been targeted for, oh, we just wanted our free speech. But at the end of the day, we know what it is. It's a ploy, they're desperate. They're running out of space and the pressure has to be kept on because as long as websites like this, and by the way, Kiwi Farms isn't the last one. There will be others. There will be other websites like this and we will push against those as well. But websites like Kiwi Farms that seek to simply cause harm, that seek to do damage, that seek to do nothing but harm innocent and loving people, they need to go. It's time for them to go. And it's time for those who, uh, it's time for those who, who, um, who, who support and create these things, those who back websites like this, these who, those people who look the other way, it's time for them to have repercussions. It's time for them to feel a little bit of the pain that they've uh, put out into the world. I guess the last thing I'll say, I keep saying that I have one last thing, but whatever, I don't really care. I guess the last thing that I'll say on this is just, uh, I truly, truly, truly hope that Keffels succeeds in this campaign. I hope that Keffels is able to get Kiwi Farms for all that they're worth. I hope that Keffels is able to shut them down and end their fucking reign of pathetic terror because I'm really, really fucking tired 
I'm really fucking tired of hearing horror stories. I'm really fucking tired of, of people that I care about who are just doing their thing, who are just making art on the internet, who are just making videos, who are making music, who are writing about things, people who are peaceful people, who are kind people, constantly having to live in fear that they're gonna be targeted by a deranged website um, with no recourse to defend themselves. Now, thankfully, we've gotten to a point where there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot more community connections. Uh, people like Keffels have been able to, uh, I wanna talk about the successes that Keffels had. Keffels has been able to, to, um, to reach a lot of people and has also been able to receive a lot of support from a lot of different communities. Our community, Vosh's community, uh, 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 um, Esqueer, uh, Ale Alexandra Caraballo, Caraballo, I can't remember how to pronounce her name. Um, uh, various other websites have managed to actually get Keffel's story out there. And there's been a lot of people who've come together to try and help and protect and support Keffel's through all of this. But the reality is that a lot of Kiwi Farms victims do not have this level of support. At most, they might have a small social group that might also get targeted. And that's part of the problem. We have to be able to provide support to people. We have to be able to insulate them and protect them together. We take care of us. We protect us.